Getting good at the skill of translating an idea into a computer program is really hard. And it can be really easy to think to yourself, oh, I have this idea in mind, it's going to be really a breeze to implement. And then you crack open a text editor and just stare blankly at it, wondering, where do I even get started? Uh, how do I organize my thoughts and structure the program before I even get started writing? And how do I avoid constant rewriting and getting lost in the weeds? So in this video, I'm going to share a technique that was super valuable to me when I was going from fluency in zero programming languages to fluency in one programming language to avoiding problems like this and getting better at translating ideas into programs. Let's talk about the technique. Essentially what you're going to do is create an outline in your natural language of choice. I'm going to use English. When I say outline, I mean the exact same kind of outline that you would use if you were writing an essay or something like that. It's a separate document where you jot down the structure of what you're writing, and then you can refer back to it as a kind of map. You're going to fill the outline in with everything you can think of. You remember that exercise in elementary school where your job is to teach an alien how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich step by step? The whole point of it is that an alien doesn't know anything about toast or toasters or peanut butter, and so you have to be super explicit about every single step. So we're aiming for the same kind of thing here, getting really clear about the problem as you understand it right now. You'll start writing code and keep the outline somewhere visible, referring back to it for guidance to stay on track and updating it as your mental model of the problem changes. So let's take a look at an example where we write some code and apply this technique. What we're gonna build is a URL health checker. So it's gonna be a command line program where we pass in a URL and it loads the page at that URL and then prints out a success message if it works and prints out an error message if it fails. I'm gonna write this program in Python, but if you're unfamiliar with Python, don't worry about it. The point of this is to get a view into the process. It's not about the specific language or anything like that. I'm gonna get started by jotting down an outline of my current understanding of the problem, and I apologize in advance for my handwriting. We know that we wanna run our program via the command line and pass in a URL argument. We're also gonna to wanna to validate that the URL is legit, by which I mean that it's not just some random string like dogs. Then we're gonna load the URL, which means making a request to that URL. And finally, we wanna print a message to the user. In the previous step, we made a request to the URL, and there's gonna be a response to that request. If the response status code is an error, then we wanna print an error message, and otherwise, we wanna print a success message. So with a basic outline in place, let's start coding. Let's zoom in on that first item in the outline and pretend that the others don't even exist. Run program via command line, pass in dash dash URL argument. Besides helping us focus our efforts, this practice is also forcing us to put our thoughts into words, which comes in handy if we need to do a Google search or something like that. I happen to already know how to parse command line arguments in Python, but if I didn't, having done this would make it a little bit more explicit and easy for me to see Oh yeah, that's, that's what I could search for here. I could search for command line arguments Python, which would probably lead me to a similar solution. I'm going to import the argparse module and use it to create an argument parser. Next, I'll add dash dash URL as a named argument. Then we need to parse the arguments. And at this point, I wanna run the program to see if it does what I think it does. So if I run python check.py dash dash url foo, it prints back args.url, which is foo. So great. But I just realized something. Right now our program isn't requiring a URL argument. You see when I run it without the URL passed in, uh, it just prints out none because we didn't pass anything. So I'm gonna hop back over to the outline and write required next to that URL argument. And then back in the code, I'm going to make it required in the way that the arg parser wants me to do it. So now if we try to run the program without a URL, it says the following arguments are required, URL. Okay, great. The next item on our list is making sure that it's a valid URL. But I'm actually going to skip over that and go straight to the next item of making a request to the URL. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I have a hunch that the library that we're gonna to use to make a request is gonna handle the URL validation for us. This brings up an important point, which is that even though we're making an outline that is in order, a sequence of step-by-step -step instructions, 
That doesn't mean that when we're implementing it, we can't hop around a little bit. We'll import the requests library and use it to make a get request to the URL passed in as a command line argument. So we'll have the program print out the response and let's test it out. I'm gonna run the program passing in the URL of my website and we get a response of a 200, which is a success. Great. Let's see what happens if we pass in a bogus URL like dogs. Perfect, it looks like we get an error. Invalid URL dogs, no schema supplied. That's good enough for me. Let's check off validate legit URL. Now let's take a look at the final item on our list, printing a message for either success or error. At this point, looking at the outline, I realized that I need to get a little bit more clear about what constitutes an error. So this would be a good point to pause and do a little bit of research. So I go and do that and I come back and I decide that any status code under 200 or over 400 will be an error. So I'm gonna update the outline to factor that in. While I was looking into the status code stuff, I found that the requests library that we're using puts an attribute called okay on each response. So we can actually just do response.okay and that will mean the same thing as a status code within the 200s or the 300s. So if that's the case, we're gonna print success and otherwise we're gonna print failed and print out the status code that it failed with. So first let's test this with a URL that we expect to give back a successful response. Great. And finally, let's try to trigger a 404 failure by entering a bogus path onto my website. Perfect. So that concludes the example of how I've used outlines to help in my work. There are a few points that I wanna clarify. First, this kind of outline is not the same as a user story. If you're not familiar with that jargon, a user story is an informal description of a software feature that's often written from the point of view of the end user of the system. It helps to organize your thoughts around what exactly is being built and how to prioritize effort. And this, by contrast, is at a very different level of zoom. This is a lot more zoomed in, and we've already decided what we wanna build, and it's more of a tool to help organize our own thinking around that. This is also not the same as waterfall development or big design upfront or things like that. So those practices are all about spending a whole bunch of time upfront before building a system, getting really, really clear about how exactly it's going to work in really great detail. So for example, it might mean writing a 200 page document that totally specifies the behavior of a system. By contrast, this is very small scale and it's not intended to be used all the time. It's more like training wheels to help get better at this process. We're doing this to clarify our mental model of the problem and nail the structure and sequence of instructions. So don't get too hung up on other aspects of code organization, like how the files laid out or whether you have nested directories or more of a flat directory structure. Focusing too much on those areas has very diminishing returns. And finally, rewriting, reorganizing, and refactoring code are all good and chill and fine. As your understanding of a problem develops and becomes more clear, the shape of the code is naturally going to change and that's just part of the process, but having an outline like this is absolutely gonna to help to do that kind of stuff more effectively. We'll conclude with a few points about why outlining rules. To take problems that are hard for you now and break them into smaller problems that are digestible now and you can make progress on, you need a bunch of different tactics. This particular tactic untangles coming up with the structure and sequence of what we need to do from implementing that in code. And it's a lot easier to do these two things separately at first and then combine them together later. This is probably a good point to mention that the idea isn't to do this forever on every problem, but it's certainly worth spending a little bit of time on it for something that's hard. I still use it for problems that are hard for me all the time. This technique leverages something you already know really well, natural language, to learn something new that you don't know so well. And finally, jotting down this kind of outline gives you a roadmap to avoid getting lost in the weeds, scope creeping on yourself, etc. If you're not familiar with that term, scope creep refers to the general tendency to accidentally and constantly increase the scope of the project that you're working on. 